Hey everyone, welcome back. So last time we talked about what makes a butterfly. It's been a while since that video came out, so you can click here to watch it again. But to summarize, insects are a class made up of many orders. Moths and butterflies belong to the same order, called Lepidoptera, and in fact butterflies are just one superfamily in that order, called Papilionoidea. And this superfamily is made up of seven butterfly families, which means that there are seven types of butterfly. So how do we know who is who? Let's find out. The oldest butterfly family is probably Papilionidae. These are some of the biggest and beautifulest butterflies out there. Unfortunately, they don't have any one obvious unifying character, but they're pretty easy to recognize. Just looking at these pictures should give you a sense of the gestalt. So there are two main types of Papilionids, Swallowtails and Parnassians. Swallowtails are really easy to recognize. They're brightly colored, with tails trailing from their back wings. You might think that that's where they get their name, but actually, swallowtail refers to the way that their back wings are split. And that was a smart move because not all swallowtails have tails. Also, not all butterflies with tails are swallowtails, as we're going to see. Parnassians, the second type of papillionid, also don't have tails. They're usually gray or white with black markings, and most have two small red eye spots on the back wings. As you can see, papillionids look very fashionable and modern. They've got lots of clean lines and bold colors. So you might not expect that this was probably the first butterfly family to evolve from moths. After papillionidae come some older looking families, Hedylidae and Hesperiidae. And when I say older looking, I mean, these butterflies look a lot like moths. In fact, hedylids are known as moth butterflies, which is very fitting because they seem to be on the border of moths and butterflies. They were once thought to be the sister group to all butterflies, meaning they were the moths that came the closest to being butterflies without actually being butterflies. And then we found out that they're more genetically similar to other butterflies than papillionids, which definitely have to be butterflies, so, so that was a little awkward. But then a follow-up study got a different result and concluded that they're still butterflies, but not as much. Sorry, that's all a bit complicated. Uh, I guess we can talk more about it later. Anyway, here's some things about hedylids. They have spindly antennae, like moths, but long, slim abdomens, like butterflies. And they're usually brown. And kind of boring. All right, let's move on. Hesperids are commonly known as skippers because of their cute, darting flight. They don't have clubbed antennae either. But Avalon, didn't you say- Butterflies have clubbed antennae. Moths have sort of wispy or spindly antennae. Yeah, well, there are always exceptions. Skipper antennae aren't spindly or feathery either. They're hooked. More like butterflies than moths, I'd say. Um, but their bodies are a bit chubby. More like moths than butterflies. Ah, that's confusing, isn't it? Well anyway, these guys also tend to be dull and drab, though there are a few dazzling exceptions. And also, they have a particularly jaunty way of resting their wings, which I really appreciate. The family Pieridae is made up of whites, sulfurs, and orange tips. These guys are a little on the small side and quite minimalist. They come in a limited selection of plain matte shades. You have whites, which tend to be White sulfurs are yellow or yellow-green, and orange tips are white or yellow with orange tips. Okay, so these ones might seem kind of boring too, but just take a look at this one. Or this one. And who could forget the California dog face? Uh, also, believe it or not, even the boring-looking ones look exciting. Just not to us. You see, some Pierids have secret ultraviolet wing markings, which are only visible to animals with UV vision, like them. They use these to communicate their sex and relationship status to potential mates. Nymphalidae is the biggest butterfly family. Not the family with the biggest butterflies, that's Papillionidae. Just look at this guy! But the biggest family, in that it has the most species. Nymphalids are commonly known as brush-footed butterflies. Most nymphalids appear to have just four legs, like a table or a tetrapod. But if you look closer, you can see that the first two are there. They're just really, really small. They use these reduced forelegs to taste their food, and because of this unique character, this family is very easy to identify, which is great, because it's got all the good ones.
The family Lycina day is home to the gossamer winged butterflies. They're called this because their wings have a nice silken sheen. Lycenids are small and fast and have pretty interesting childhoods. Most Lycina caterpillars live with ants, either on the same plant or inside the ant's nest itself. These caterpillars can produce ant recognition pheromones that fool ants into accepting them as one of their own. Once they're in, they get lovingly tended to by ant babysitters, and they even get their own ant bodyguards to protect them from predators. Lycenids come in four types. Blues, coppers, hair streaks, and harvesters. Blues are blue, coppers are copper, hair streaks are blue or copper or otherwise, and have little tails on their wings that look like antennae. They even perch upside down to fool predators. Harvesters are all blotchy and have predatory caterpillars that eat all sorts of things, including ants. Finally, butterflies in the family Rhyodinidae are commonly known as metal marks. This is because their wings can have these cool, futuristic, metallic spots. The spots come in silver or blue and are set against a tasteful brown, gray, or rust-colored background. This family is also interesting because it contains a lot of mimics. It has species that look like butterflies from other families, and even moths from other superfamilies, and even jumping spiders. Alright, there's nothing cooler than that, so I'm gonna stop here. This has been a brief introduction to the seven butterfly families, an attempt to give you a feel for their differing qualities. I said I was going to teach you how to tell them apart, and this stuff should get you most of the way there. There are a few more technical tricks I still want to go through, but you can't bring up wing venation five minutes into a video and expect anyone to pay any attention, so I'm going to save that for next time. Thank you for your support of this channel, everyone. If you haven't, please subscribe to get updated when new videos come out, and maybe leave a comment telling us which butterfly family is your favorite. See you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.